In this short video we're going to carry out column chromatography as a demonstration exercise. We're going to be separating our potassium manganate 7 or potassium permanganate as it used to be called and potassium chromate 6, potassium dichromate. The beauty of these solutions are that each is highly coloured. In the video we're going to show you how to set up a column and then use it. The stationary phase that we're using is alumina or aluminium oxide and the eloquence or solvents for chromatography are to be 0.5 molar nitric acid to remove the potassium manganate 7 or 1 molar sulfuric acid for the removal of the potassium chromate 6. The choice of stationary and mobile phases depends on what you're trying to separate. To carry out column chromatography you need a column. A burette will do. You do not need a specific tapped tube. The first thing to do is to boil up some water and add some alumina, in this case, as the stationary phase. In other column chromatographies you might be using silica. The reason for boiling up the solution is to get rid of any dissolved air. Some glass wool or some cotton wool is placed at the bottom of the column and hot water is passed through this to remove any air trapped within the cotton wool or glass wool. Next we pour in the slurry of alumina to the desired height. Always ensure that there is some solution above the alumina in preparing the column. The next step is to pass some dilute nitric acid through the column. Once this is done and ensuring that the column is perfectly flat on top, we either cover the alumina with some sand or with a disc of filter paper cut to the correct diameter. This stops the top of the column being agitated when we pour the eventual solution through. The mixture to be separated here is an equivolume mixture of 0.05 potassium chromate 6 and potassium manganate 5. The tap is opened and the solution is eluted by passing down the column nitric acid. This will separate out the potassium manganate 7. You will notice that potassium manganate 7 passes through the stationary phase faster than the potassium chromate 6. Once all the pink solution has been removed we can now separate out the potassium chromate 6 using 1 molar sulfuric acid as the solvent. Change over the receiving beaker and wait. If it's only the separation that you're demonstrating, you will need to dispose of these solutions according to local health and safety regulations. You may have noticed that we've used a pump to speed up the passing of the solution through the column. This is not necessary. There are a number of tips that you need to be aware of. Firstly, you should be having a column with no air bubbles trapped, either within the cotton wool or within the eluent. The column, of course, should be vertical. Ensure you've got a barrier such as sand or a cut piece of filter paper on the top of the stationary phase when pouring. In advance of starting the separation, make sure you have sufficient collection vessels on hand. And lastly, don't let the column stand there as soon as you finish it. Empty it and wash it out. Otherwise you'll find it's more tricky to get it clean. An extension to this experiment, if it was a class practical, probably at post 16, would be to determine the concentrations of either the potassium manganate 7 and or the potassium chromate 6 by suitable titrations. As with all practical work, make sure you follow local health and safety guidelines.